Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Molecular Makeup. It's your favorite makeup obsessed chemist Ashley and today I'm so excited because I'm reviewing the new Juvia's Place Eye Magic Foundation and I'm going to be doing a full day wear test with this, seeing how it works with my dry sensitive skin and also explaining some of the ingredients from a chemist perspective. So if you want to see my review just keep watching. Okay, so I applied this foundation using a damp beauty blender and I only use a pea size amount because I'd heard other people say that a little bit goes a long way and I can definitely verify that. Just that small amount covered my entire face and it was very high coverage, very full coverage and I will show you a clip here now of me saying my initial thoughts when I first applied the makeup. I'm really impressed that it's not more drying because I noticed that it said that it is a velvety matte foundation and a lot of times matte foundations don't look very good on my skin because my skin does lean more dry. I'm interested to see throughout the day how this wears because a lot of matte foundations look kind of cakey on me. I usually lean more toward foundations that say dewy or glowing because that's just what I prefer with since my skin does lean a, a bit more dry. I don't know, I mean, it doesn't look super matte to me. It, um, it's not shiny either, it's not like super shiny or anything, but it's a very beautiful finish. What do you guys think? I, I decided that I'm just going to set one side of my face. My favorite setting powder is the Hourglass Diffuse Light Setting Powder. So I'm putting the side setting powder on my left, which will be your right. So it'll be the right side for you. I'm not going to use any setting spray today because I just want to see how this foundation performs itself. Okay, I now have all my makeup on. And so just my first impressions. Again, I'm impressed that it's a matte foundation and it looks this nice and it doesn't look very cakey. And also I have issues with texture. I will be doing a glycolic acid treatment drugstore versus high end, so please subscribe and click the notification bell if you'd like to see that. I'm pretty impressed that it doesn't seem to be grabbing too much to that texture. I will be doing check-ins. I'll show you what it looks like out in natural sunlight. I got to uh, research a little bit early so that I could show you how this foundation looks out in the natural sunlight. I've had it on for about an hour. Um, as you can see, I have some scars. Um, I've had these since I was a kid, so you can still kind of see that. But I feel like with all foundations, I can pretty much see that. Um, we get a little bit closer. Um, as you can see, I have texture. Again, I'm going to be reviewing glycolic acid soon, and that should help with that. It's not clinging terribly to my texture. Like some foundations, especially matte foundations, like really look really patchy on my skin but it's not terrible it's not like accentuating it out of the norm I would say personally like the finish of it I think it looks really nice I will check in again at lunchtime so I'll see you in a few hours and let you know how it's holding up Okay, so you guys know that as a chemist, I'm very interested in the ingredients in my cosmetics. And so I looked at the ingredients for this foundation, and water's the first ingredient, and then dimethicone is the second ingredient. And dimethicone actually kind of gets a bad rep on YouTube and on social media platforms. It's known for being pore clogging. Uh, and there are different myths about it causing issues with the skin. It is a silicone and again there are so many myths surrounding silicones that they are bad for the skin, uh, don't allow your skin to breathe, etc. I decided to look and see some scientific articles and see what they had to say about this. So it actually turns out that quite the opposite is true. So dimethicone is actually hypoallergenic, non-irritating, and unreactive. So um, the FDA actually lists dimethicone as an FDA approved skin protectant. I'll show that on the screen here. And allergies to dimethicone are actually quite rare. Dimethicone has actually been used to effectively decrease skin irritation as according to one study. So there is a myth that dimethicone actually um, doesn't allow the skin to breathe, that it forms kind of this impermeable layer that suffocates the skin. 
Um, and I actually found an article that actually supports the exact opposite. It Dimethicone is permeable to water vapor and oxygen. I'll show the data here. So yeah, it, it's actually very breathable. So well, I'm personally happy with that being the second ingredient in this formula. Oh, and there was one more study that showed that actually it can increase moisture and decrease transepidermal water loss. So that means that it's going to decrease the amount of water loss from the outermost layer of the skin. So I'm personally very happy with this ingredient being the second ingredient in this foundation. Dimethicone makes your skin look flawless, blurs imperfections, makes it look very smooth, and it also has these skin benefits, and we've also debunked these myths about it be actually being bad for your skin, so I think that it's a great ingredient in this product. The next ingredient I wanted to talk about in this foundation is Malus Domestica Fruit Cell Culture Extract. And I actually found a study that evaluated this fruit's extract for its ability to hydrate the skin and also reduce crow's feet. And actually it was found that it significantly reduced crow's feet um, when applied topically for four weeks in a row. It reduced crow's feet by 15% over a four week period. So that's also really interesting that this fruit extract is in this formula. So I'm personally impressed with the ingredients. Now I'll go ahead and show you the other check-ins. So this was after wearing it for four and a half hours. Um, as you can see, uh, I do wear lab goggles and you can see it kind of left sort of like a indention um, around my nose area and that always happens no matter what foundation I wear. It's unavoidable really when I'm wearing lab goggles. But other than that, I think it looked really nice. It clings to the texture a bit right here um, and on my forehead, but again, most foundations will do that for me and um, unless I use glycolic acid. I did notice, um, as you can see, I was kind of like rubbing this area right here because I thought it looks kind of red and patchy. I think that was actually my bronzer um, not looking kind of patchy. So I think that I should have set this foundation with setting powder first before applying my bronzer. I can try that. Um, I will try that uh, next time I wear this foundation and I'll leave it in the comments below. Uh, let you know how it worked out. You know, the foundation that I typically wear, it works for me just to apply my bronzer and blush over top of it directly without putting a setting powder down first. But I think this formula might kind of require you to put down a setting powder first before you blend your bronzer and blush for it to be a more smooth and flawless blend. So I couldn't really tell a big difference between the side where I applied the setting powder versus where I did not and as far as the wear time. So I think that you could apply this with no setting powder, but the only problem is it. I think that your bronzer and blush would probably blend more easily on top of the setting powder being laid down first with this particular foundation. So here I am after eight hours. Okay, and then I'll show you the clip of me after 12 hours. Okay, so this is my last check-in of the day. I've now had the foundation on for 12 hours, and I'm honestly very happy with how it's held up. Um, I actually did get um, some compliments on it today. One person told me that my skin looks like porcelain today and that it looked really beautiful, so other people even noticed my skin today, and I felt like it looked very airbrushed and flawless all day. Um, it's worn off my nose a little bit and I do wear lab goggles so I mean of course I kind of get some wear here. Overall I think this wore very nicely and I definitely see myself you know wearing this on a regular basis now so. So I'm very impressed with this foundation. I think it works well for my dry skin and sensitive skin. I think it held up well. I think this will become a new favorite of mine. Um, I hope this review was helpful to you and thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos and I hope you have a great day.